This is Roubaix, this is a city in the north or the north of France. And this is a very large logistics platform operated by La Redoute, which has been our client for quite a long time. And today we are exceptional guests invited to actually visit the entire facility, which we will do in the following. So here we are going to the actually reception area. So the reception area is essentially where the trucks are going to deliver their equipment. The boxes are unloaded here and can flow into the main part of the facilities through those conveyors. So here we are late in the day, so they are still unloading one truck over there. But fundamentally, uh, it is a low period of the day. The, receptions, the reception area was a lot more active during the morning. From the reception area, which is just there, we are now moving into, I would say, the midterm stocking area of La Redoute. So the trucks arrive here, they have conveyor belts, and if we move in this direction, we can see that essentially we have um, what is called the mini load systems. The mini load systems are essentially uh, 10 meters high arrays of very deep storage very compact storage so we have 10 meters high we have i think 19 levels and the idea is that all the boxes that are present in uh in the um mini load area all the boxes are completely standardized and the the boxes have not been processed in any way they have just been unloaded uh through the trucks and so on. Uh, if they are compliant with the specification that is expected from the mini load as you can see the storage density is very high. So if you have a box that has like a few extra centimeters or that does not have exactly the same form, uh, it's just not going to fit. What we can see here is a mini load system with a bit more light. So it is, it is interesting to see we have the robotic arm that is 10 meter high and that is at the very end. And the idea is that ro this robotic arm has only one mobile component. So it can, it can only pick from one floor at a time. Here we have an internal packing operation. So essentially, this is all the boxes that have been received uh, from suppliers that are non-compliant. So I'm not talking about uh, boxes that are damaged or um, that have weak structure or anything. It is literally the box is good, but it is not up to standard for the, the uh, mini load. And so those packing stations consist of opening the non-standard box and putting all the content of the box into a standardized box. So now we are entering an area which is completely different. Uh, it's not actually as visible, but if we see uh, here we are in a system, so the previous system was a mini node, so this is the multi shuttle. So here, the idea is that uh, every box contains one and one uh, article only. Um, and, thus, and, and then you have shuttles that can pick uh, boxes at every uh, floor. This area is not optimized for maximal storage density. That was the mineral. The multi-shuttle is basically uh, optimized to, in terms of uh, maximization of picking throughput. So here, actually, the box is standardized, but what the box contains is not. Uh, and, uh, and we see that, I believe, La Redoute has a capacity in this area of 300,000 pieces. But it's literally, uh, you're counting in pieces because it's not the number of SKUs. Every single unit that you have counts as one. It's going to count as, as only one. We are moving toward the section where people um, take items as collected from the multi-shuttle and put them in the bags. So we can see that we have all those, um, all those bags, that every single bag contain an, uh, an article, one and only one article. And so here, what we see is essentially, we have the boxes that arrive from uh, the uh, multi-shuttle and uh, it's going to be a manual operation to take an item that comes in from uh, the multi-shuttle and put it in a bag. And this is done manually. And so the, the people that are here have only a tiny few operations to do. They just have to pick, scan, and drop into uh, the bag and everything else is taken care of. So that 
It's a manual operation still, but it can be done with very high productivity. So here, what we can see is that we have bags that contain the articles that are going to be served to clients. And the uh, multi shuttle operates in batches of size 216. And that will become interesting in a moment. So out of those batches of 216, what we have is 200 plus items that are serving a long list of a customer order, except every single specific customer order, if it involves multiple items, those items might be spread out in the sequence. So we can see, you know, the, there is a sequence of, ba of, uh, of bags. And um, this is not good because uh, La Renault needs to have uh, the items that are targeting, that are intended for the same client to be put together so that all the articles can actually be put in a box and for shipping. And so there is like a sorting operation and the sorting operation requires essentially a three-stage sort uh, that takes essentially blocks of six and that sort them uh, and, and that sort them. And so that's why we have this uh, very odd number 216. It's literally six to the power three and it is needed to uh, complete the sort of the items so that they are aligned with their underlying customer orders. Uh, and we see that we have operators over there that operate on doing the, uh, the expedition. So here we can see the secrets for pochettes, for that a very versatile way to carry all sorts of products. In a, in a way that is very, very compact. So as long as the article can fit in a pochette, it will be put on those rails. And that's those things that we have just described where it needs to be sorted so that the expedition that happened, that happened just over there can, uh, can be done. Here we have the area for the non-standardized item, items. It is all the boxes that comes out of trucks over there and that could not, uh, could not get into the conveyor belt typically because they are too large and so they can't actually enter the big robots, uh, the big robotic circuits and so they end up being sold here. And um, it is typically the sort of larger items that La Redoute is selling, uh, furniture, mattresses, these sort of things. Um, this facility is dedicated to, um, I would say, smaller pieces of uh, smaller articles. But nonetheless, they have another site, but sometimes they use this storage space as a, a transit. So essentially things are going to be stored here, but no customers are going to be uh, served from uh, Quetran. What we are seeing here is the last step uh, before shipment. So we have seen essentially the packing step that was just the other side of this wall. And here, what we see on this conveyor belt is products that are already packed and they are going to fall into bins. And every single bin is literally going to end up in a truck. So as such, so this is like the, the last step. And we can see that uh, the conveyor belt is um, quite sophisticated because you can see that the conveyor belt is um, not only flowing forward, but it has a capacity to push a product laterally so that it will end up in one of those bins. So it's, um, it's a, for a conveyor belt, it is quite a complex piece of engineering because every single segment has its own uh, motorization and probably sensors so that it can decide just at the right moment to drop the article into the right bin. And what we can see over there is all this storage area are basically for product, textile products that are on hanger. So it is like a specific uh, section that is dedicated for things like dresses. Uh, obviously, we have uh, some uh, lingerie as well. And we have all sorts of things where the product needs to be kept on a hanger and thus it do not fit the pattern of the usual flow. This concludes our visit of this facility. It's quite enormous. We have we actually started six meters down below, just right where I stand. We walked all the way, that's about 400 meters, down to the packing area at the very, very end. Then we went up and six meters above the ground where we are right now. And we complete the, the tour by doing those 400 meters again, except that this time we were doing it uh, six, uh, six meters above ground. And if we go down the stairs, we will circle back to where we just started. Thank you for seeing this episode. See you soon. <laughs>